the warm-up activity for this lesson hinted at the fact that for a given function, you can't find the derivative everywhere. That's what objective two is all about. You'll be able to determine where the derivative fails to exist. So to figure out where that could possibly happen, we're gonna do a little exploration here. We're gonna do it on, uh, we're gonna do it on Desmos with a little demo here. And there are three different cases that are possible where a derivative could fail to exist. So let's take a look over here on Desmos. So right now I've got myself quadratic function, tangent line plotted at a particular point. I can move the slider left and right and it's gonna move that point of tangency. Or you can just actually click on the point on the graph itself and you can move it around. All right, so when I move this thing around, it doesn't look like there's any problems. It looks like the derivative, which is the slope of that tangent line there, looks like it's defined everywhere. As a matter of fact, I can go down here on number seven and eight. Seven is going to turn on the derivative, and number eight is going to turn on the corresponding point on the derivative graph. So let me say if I move it over here in quadrant two, the point that's on the green graph, the derivative, whatever the y-coordinate there, it, that's the slope of this tangent line. And like I said, it looks like it's defined everywhere. All right, so there's no problem here on a quadratic. Let's turn all of those functions off and then move down to the square root function. I'm just gonna turn on the first three so I can see the function and then I can see the tangent line here. So I'm gonna, looks like there's no problem here. Let's move it pretty close to the origin. Oh, what just happened? What, what just happened? All right, so notice that as I get closer and closer to the origin, this tangent line's getting steeper and steeper and steeper. Let's turn on that derivative graph and the point of, the corresponding point on the derivative. Right, watch what's gonna happen there. And see the point that's on the derivative graph just absolutely disappears because that slope is getting infinitely big. So what kind of tangent line is that one? Zoom. It's having a hard time graphing it right there at the origin. I wonder why. All right, let's get rid of the square root functions and then let's go to the semicircle. Turn on the first three, 16, 17, and 18. All right, tangent line right here seems great, but let's move it really close to, say, five. Oh, all right, how about negative five over here? I'm gonna move it real close to, oh, dang. Let's look at what the graph of the derivative looks like. All right, so notice that as I get closer and closer to negative five, kind of like with that square root function, what's happening to that tangent line there? Its slope is approaching infinity. That one's positive infinity over there, and this one's shooting down to negative infinity. On the green graph, let me just hide some of this stuff. Hide, hide, hide. On this green graph here, you have yourself a vertical asymptote at 5 and at negative 5. All right, we'll hide those. Let's look at a cubic function. Turn on the first three, 22, 23, 24. And I'm going to have to come back up here to the slider because it's way off the screen. Okay, there we go. All right, so now I can move it. All right, so you can see right here at the origin, it looks like we're having like a horizontal tangent line there. Okay, doesn't seem to be any issues. Let's turn on the derivative graph and the point on the derivative that represents the slope. All right, so hmm, look, we have a cubic for the function and it looks like a quadratic for the derivative? That's interesting. All right, so this one doesn't seem to be any issues. Let's turn off cubic. Let's move on to cube root. Turn on the first three, 28, 29, and 30. Wait, well, okay, wait, I still have this 26 on. Get rid of that guy. All right, so I'm going to move this to the left and to the right. Oh, look what's about to happen. Look, what's happening? Oh, it, did it just disappear right there? Looks like it just disappeared right there for a second. So it looks like I might have an, an issue right there at the origin. Let's turn on the derivative graph there. And notice on the derivative graph, what do we have right there at the origin? We've got ourselves a vertical tangent line. And as, as we move closer and closer to the origin, the slope is getting infinitely big. When your slope is infinitely big, that means, that's right, a vertical tangent line. All right, let's get rid of cube root and move on to the sine function. Boom, boom, boom. Just first three, 34, 35, and 36. We've seen this graph before. This is like a roller coaster. 
Doesn't seem to be any issues here. Just for fun, let's turn on the derivative graph and then turn on its corresponding slope point. Hmm, well look at that green graph compared to the purple one. The purple one's sine, look at the green graph there. I wonder what function that one is. All right, so it looks like sine has no issue whatsoever. Turn them off, get rid of them. There's no issues. And let's look at uh, tangent. First three, 40, 41, and 42. So a tangent graph, whoa, what just happened here? So as I move closer and closer down to pi, negative pi over two, in order to get to the next one, I've got to cross an asymptote, right? So this is weird. This is very, very strange. Let's take a look at the graph of the derivative and its corresponding slope point. All right, so just looking at the derivative graphs, notice that it also has some, some asymptotes, some vertical asymptotes, some discontinuities that are happening right there. And I don't have a derivative right in between here. That's at pi over 2. All right. Make them disappear. You know what to do. All right, we've got a couple more. Absolute value. 46, 47, and 48. 48. 48. There we go. All right. Hey, look. On the right side of this graph, the derivative is the same thing as the function. Oh, well, what about over here on the left side? Same thing, but origin. Nothing's happening at the origin. It's looking very strange. If you call up the derivative graph, this is a graph that you have probably seen before, right? Notice that the derivative graph here has a discontinuity. There's no, there's no slope right there at the origin. This is the one that we had the warm, acti warm up activity for. Get rid of these. So it looks like the derivative doesn't exist right there at the origin. All right, we got a pointy function. Let's take a look at 52, 53, and 54. This is from an absolute value. And it was a quartic, but I took the absolute value of it. And so, oh man, this is having trouble. And so the uh, bottom half reflected over the x-axis. All right, so you can see that as I get closer and closer to these points, graph's starting to freak out. I wonder why that is. Let's look at the derivative on 55 and the 56. Okay, so what's happening as we get closer and closer to those points, those sharp turns? It's hard to see here, so I'm going to zoom in, and you can see that the derivative graph is then discontinuous. There jumps, indicating what? What's it indicating right there? Let's turn off those pointy function and... We've got a piecewise function. This is the last one. It's 58, 59, 60. So it's just parts of a parabola here. So move closer and closer to this y-axis. It's getting closer to being horizontal. And then it jumps down here. Hmm. Let's take a look at that derivative. Derivative is going to be interesting on this one. Huh, that derivative there looks like an absolute value graph. That's interesting. Okay. So... Did you notice, did you pick up on three different cases of where a derivative would fail to exist? When we'll come back in the next video, we're going to maybe try it another way and see if we can still put these pieces together and figure out when a derivative fails to exist.